Hello, everybody. Welcome once again to another episode of the Remarkable Coach podcast. As ever, I am your host, Michael Pacheco. And today with me, I am joined by Graham Snowfield, a field of snow, (laughs) Uh, as they say. Uh, Graham's purpose is to be a constant and expanding example of what is achievable. Uh, Graham, I like that bio, short and sweet. Welcome to the Remarkable Coach. Thank you very much. No, I'm, I'm very excited to be here. Nice. Awesome, man. Um, as always with uh, this podcast to, to kind of kick things off, I'd like to invite our guest to just tell us a little bit more about yourself in your own words. Awesome. Thanks, Michael. So as you said, my what I discovered as my purpose is to be this constant expanding example of, of what is achievable. And the longer form of that is, and how that is manifested is, you know, we were chatting a little bit before you hit record. Now, you can find me, you know, scaling mountaintops in the Pacific Northwest. You can find me, you know, galloping on horseback with my wife in the Okavango Delta in Botswana. I've done a exploration of the world's largest cave in Vietnam. Yes. I've done lots of stuff in Europe. I've done you know, my wife had a equestrian event in Southern Washington a couple of years ago. So I packed the paddle board and hiked up Mount St. Helen, threw it in the water. Nice. Uh, <laughs> so a lot, a lot of my life is, <clears throat> is outdoors. And it's interesting as I looked around for a word that I could live into. There's a Swedish word pronounced Leif's Nutari, which just means one who loves life deeply and lives it to the extreme. Okay. I like it. And so that's that's the pursuit that I have on on a daily basis and as a as a coach I see it as a culmination and an ongoing practice of that lifestyle hmm. that I'm that I'm leading. And it's interesting because when people hear the outdoorsy or the athletic side of me they're like, "Oh, you coach athletes mm-hmm. to perform in their events." And mm-hmm. I, I have coached some athletes, but usually it's transition mm-hmm. from their athletic career Outside. into what happens next. Yeah, and so it's it's very much focused on you know, yeah helping other people achieve more, figuring out what they want to do, realizing that they're capable of more, and how to do that with less friction and more happiness. Yeah, I like it. I love it. Awesome. Um, sweet, man. Who, uh, who are your, so you, you mentioned you work with some athletes, usually in a transition out of athletic athletics as a profession. Who else are your clients? Who else do you work with? Great question. And it's, I've worked with, uh, I currently work with a, you know, an intact sales team and a financial services in the financial service industry and like an insurance brokerage. I've got one-on-one clients that might range from a 21, I think he's how old is he now? He's now 22 year old videographer. Oh. I've been working with him for four years rather than go to university. Mm-hmm. Nice. I got engaged as a coach. Nice. And we've grown his revenue from about 40 K a year to 115 and mm. that time span, which is awesome. That's great. It's interesting too because I work with a lot of Gen Z and millennials because I am I am just young enough to be a millennial, <laughs> but I am old enough to see the the difference, right? I'm like what? I'm like the what year go ahead. I'm an eighty one. So 81? I'm okay. like I'm the I'm the you know, cabbage patch Nintendo year. I'm um, I'm nineteen eighty. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm okay. one year ahead of you. And it's like, yeah, like Elder millennial or young, young Gen Z, Gen X. I'm not really sure. Mostly Gen X probably exactly. identify with, but yeah, right, right, right there. Yeah. The and then I would say work with, like I do work with a lot of professionals. I work with people that are, because of the work that I do, they are aspiring leaders. Mm-hmm. They don't, and they aren't necessarily looking for the title to be the leader. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's interesting too, because I also find that I work with, I actually work with a lot of women. Mm-hmm. as well uh, there i have a admittedly i have a feminine side to me that i'm not afraid to acknowledge <laughs> <laughs> weird <laughs> um, 
So what is what? T- t- let's talk more about that. What does that mean? So aspiring leaders that don't necessarily want that as a title, or they don't necessarily have it. I think one of the things, it. right? So I think there, it's it's a great question, that, and the clarity around it is, and the clarification around it is important. I subscribe to the belief that if you do not have the leader mm-hmm. that you need or require or desire, it is therefore incumbent upon you to become that leader. Mm-hmm. I like it. And I think there's, if we look to it, even the concept of a leader, how we use the term, we seem to currently in our in our society, especially in North America, and a bit in Europe, we tend to interchangeably use the term leader and manager, which it's not how I would use it. I think there is a difference and I appreciate the, the agreement. Yeah, yeah. And, and so I think there's people that are just there. <clears throat> the aspiring leader is people that they want to do more for other people. They want to be in and of service. They understand that leadership is actually a lifestyle mm-hmm. that yes, it, it is executed in a professional setting. Mm-hmm. Uh, very much how we were talking before we hit record. It's in a personal setting. It can be in a extracurricular setting. Mm-hmm. It can just be how you're showing up, interacting with people. Mm-hmm. And I believe that leadership has evolved significantly, even over the past two or three generations. And what we need for leaders from leaders going forward, I think we've also been really great at passing down things like power and authority and wealth, Mm -hmm. but that not necessarily leadership. Mm -hmm. And I think part of that is we haven't been using the word that long or we've been evolving as humans and as a society, you know, very quickly over the past 150 years. Yeah. And so there's, yeah, the pace of that. And so when we're looking at these aspiring leaders, it's also... You know, I look at people too that have, you know, you've got their business card and I call it alphabet soup. You know, they have a bunch of different designations after their name uh-huh. and they've earned it. And those things are, are wonderful, but the, the title on a business card or your title in a professional role or on a sports team doesn't accurately capture your ability to lead. Mm-hmm whether you are an excellent leader or the other end of the the spectrum. And so that's where I think it's those people that they show up and they're interested in leading, that they are engaged in a practice of inspiring others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, so I'm, I'm I'm curious. So like, I want to say, I want to say a couple things. So I, I would say like leadership, leadership doesn't exist in a vacuum, right? It, it exists within, the space of everything else. So, <clears throat> you know, for for a, a business card, for example, right, with the alphabet soup at the end, I mean, <clears throat> I would say that some people use those designations f- as, <clears throat> excuse me, I got something in my throat. Um, you know, perhaps you might call it like social proof. Like, like mm-hmm. I have, you know, I've gone through this training, I can be I can be trusted to professionally deal with X, Y, and Z based on all of this additional training that I've gone through, right? This con ed continuing education that I've done um, or initial education that I've done, right? Would you, I mean, certainly you have, you, you would see val- value outside of leadership in, in having those things on a, on a oh, business. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And it's, wow. Grant, like I am, I am the product of some of the best education you can get in, you know, academic education that you can get in North America. I've, I've been fortunate to work with and be connected with great leaders. I think there are, I don't want to, uh, certainly not intended to diminish mm-hmm. the designations that people have, have achieved. Uh, my point is, is that you could have, you know, administrative coordinator mm-hmm. on your business card and be an amazing leader and, and, and have the, the capacity capability to consistently demonstrate excellent leadership. Yeah. You could be the CEO of a multinational organization and you may also have the ability to be an excellent 
leader and be constantly evolving those skills uh -huh. at the same time that could be your designation and you are not currently up to speed with how your people need to be led today you might be a fantastic you might be fantastic at at managing things in within the c suite and managing you know the direction of the company and you might be a god awful leader yes yeah exactly <laughs> yes it's a, it is a possibility yes yeah, yeah. okay that, 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 that tracks that makes sense um cool cool so how do you how do you get your clients these days? How do you market yourself? Great question. And I need to give a little bit of credit to a couple of other people. Uh, yeah. I get, admittedly too, I get a lot of referrals. So yeah. I have a very wonderful network that you know, refers me business, which is excellent. Uh, at, there's an individual uh, who I, I've done his course on, um, his name is Justin Welsh, mm -hmm. uh, and he's a great guy. He has a LinkedIn course on how to scale on LinkedIn. So there's some simple stuff there in terms of, and his course is 150 bucks. Mm -hmm. Like it's very worth worth the investment to figure these things out. So again, it's it's thought leadership, it's outreach. At the same time, I look at other distribution methods, uh, whether it is with you know partnering with you know chambers of commerce or boards of trade to communicate out. Yes, there is. I would say that I also use social media for different types of social media, different platforms for different types of product offerings or services. Mm -hmm. So the LinkedIn is where I certainly do a lot of the uh, leadership coaching, I, high performance coaching, whereas, and I'll blend in some of the, the wilderness stuff that I do mm -hmm. on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Same time, I will look at on something like Instagram or Facebook, that's going to be more focused on you know, the wilderness experiences and remote wilderness coaching that I offer. And then the high performance and then the, the leadership piece from that. Yeah. Um, I would also, for people who are trying to figure out how do I do some of that, like honestly, like following someone like Justin Welsh yeah. or Gary Vaynerchuk. Yeah. Like, and to Gary's point, even from a couple of weeks ago, uh, not enough people are using the contact list in their phone huh? <laughs> basically say sure you can go and do all these things on linkedin or you can go live on instagram 10 times a day for six months yeah but you could also record three videos uh -huh. that you one that you send to your really close friends uh -huh. another one that you send to your reasonably close friends and the other ones you're like how did i meet michael pacheco again like i'll just send him this one mm -hmm. uh and we have these untapped resources uh, available to us. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the, at the same time, one of the biggest things that isn't covered in that is you need to walk your talk. Mm -hmm. So I could be saying you need to be authentic. So I could be, have great systems to deliver me leads. But if when somebody actually shows up in a conversation with me, if I am not showing up with the person I portrayed to be that authenticity, yeah, it's going to fall apart. Yeah. 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 That's a great point. That's a great point. I think, um, you know, it, it, it's not quite, um, what you're so, Yeah. I think what, what you're talking about is like, if you don't, you know, if you, if you don't, if you don't meet the, if you don't meet the bar that you've set in your marketing in the sales call, you're going to lose the sale. Even beyond that, like one thing, an interesting part about marketing, man, if you have really, really, really fantastic marketing and you have <clears throat> terrible sales, or if you have a terrible product or terrible service, right? A terrible service product. It's a really great way to run your business into the ground <laughs> because the marketing, yeah, and I, the marketing is going to drive leads. It's going to drive conversation. It's going to build trust. It's going to build authority in, in, the, in the marketplace. People are going to want to talk to you. They're going to want to buy your services if your marketing is fantastic. And if you can't deliver on any of that, what's the point? Well, your point about sales too is a lot of people go into careers mm -hmm. that they don't realize they have chosen a sales career. Mm -hmm. And I look at, so I did I've, 
Yeah, so I've run the the digital marketing and the digital sales and all the marketing for Western Canada's largest fitness company. Mm -hmm. Every single personal trainer is in sales. Yeah, uh -huh. you know, I you go to your registered massage therapist, your physiotherapist. They chose a career in sales, and they don't quite. It can be a bit of a challenge for, at first people to realize this. And it's, you know, this conversation runs the best selling wine in the world comes in a box. Like, so to your point, yes, you need, you need to understand the sales side yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah. How about, how about anybody who has taken on entrepreneurship? Oh, exactly. <laughs> you're, yeah. You're in sales a hundred percent. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and product development and fulfillment and <laughs> you're definitely in sales <laughs> yes yeah. um awesome man i i'm i'm I, I was snooping through your website uh earlier today preparing for for this podcast and uh it got me super 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 excited to talk to you today because you and i we talked about this before we hit record we have so much in, we have a lot in common i think um you you've got an entire section on your website, a page dedicated to wild walks and remote wilderness coaching. I mentioned to you before we started talking that my family and I, we live off grid and the Washington State Cascades were very, very active in the Pacific Northwest as well. Tell me about wild walks and remote wilderness coaching. What in the heck is that and where do I sign up? <laughs> I'd love to because it is... It's interesting because again, this is something that I created in part from something that Gary Vaynerchuk had said that he was encouraging people to do, which was offer things that you can't scale. Uh huh. And it's it's interesting because there's I can't scale this, so I'll, I'll explain that in a sec. Where this came from is for probably now 12, 13 consecutive years. Mm -hmm. I, oh, uh, yeah, since 2010, I've spent at least 10 consecutive days at a point in each of those years without access to a cell phone signal. Love it. And it wasn't intended to be this digital detox. Yeah. It was, I'm going to go, I've, I've all, I've been big into endurance sports, ultra distance endurance sports for a while. If it's far and sounds foolish, I think it's fun. So really where this started was I signed up to go and run a marathon on an active game reserve in South Africa. Uh -huh. Nice. You do, three days, you do three days of safari, you drive the race course, next day you run the race course, and you do a couple more days of safari. And yes, yeah. at one point, I ran a kilometer with an ostrich beside me, which is surreal. Why, but I why? just had this experience where... I'm like, okay, great. Like I'm in, I'm in South Africa. This is, I still had, I think for work, I still had like a Blackberry, you know, uh -huh. so I'm, you know, I'm driving around and I don't have connectivity to anything. And it was amazing. And so I've been with my life in the outdoors. I've done, as we were talking, as I even mentioned earlier, you know, I remember going on a trip to do this exploration of the the cave in Vietnam and somebody worked for me like, we can reach you in the cave, right? I'm like, I'm gonna be underground for five days. Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> and and I, I know what the benefit that I've experienced from that disconnection mm -hmm. has, has given me. I find that it just gives me a lot of clarity. It enables me to really slow down mm -hmm. uh, as, it gives me a lot more clarity, it helps you prioritize what's going on. And so I started to read a lot more about you know, what is the benefit of this? I think for a long time, a lot of us have heard the term forest bathing, mm -hmm. which is you know, from Japan. It's I'm trying to figure out what the, the impact that nature can have in our, a common topic in our society today, well, as well as mental health. Mm -hmm. Nature, that actually in Canada now, at, at least in BC, you can be prescribed time in nature as a partnership with the BC with BC parks. Yes. And so you actually, okay, no, this person needs to go and spend two or three hours a week in, you know, in nature and nature can be as simple as a boulevarded street 
with trees and opposite sides, mm -hmm. or it can be what you and I seem to love, which <laughs> is <laughs> very far from a cell phone tower. Yeah. And it is, so when I looked at creating this, this experience and guiding people through these experiences, this is where I came up with what I call wild walks and remote wilderness coaching. And the idea is these trips are generally they're five days long. Uh -huh. They are intentionally designed to not need a tremendous physical requirement. Uh -huh. So one of the locations, I actually have a trip that I'm going on next week uh -huh. or two weeks from now. And I remember last year, people were asking me, like, what's the elevation change or what's this or how hard is it? And this particular destination is on the west coast of Vancouver Island. Uh -huh. I'm like, well, I think the highest elevation we get to is about seven meters. It's an or, island. <laughs> it's it's an island. We're, we're, hiking, we're hiking on the coast, right? Yeah. Like we're hiking on the coast. There's a couple sections that come inland. And I should say, what is, sorry, what is seven meters? 20 feet? Mm -hmm. Like 21, 22 feet maybe? So yeah. it's not very okay. high and I, and it's designed, these things are designed to give people the experience. So there isn't necessarily a barrier. I, I do have a fitness requirement. Yeah. So we don't get very far away. And basically that is eight kilometers in two hours. So five miles walking in two hours. Yeah. Cause then we can, we can get there. Yeah. The really interesting thing and, and why this is creative and you saw this and, but to share for some of the listeners or people who are watching this is, most North Americans average 93% of their life mm -hmm. indoors in a temperature controlled environment mm -hmm. at about 72 degrees Fahrenheit or 22 degrees Celsius. And that means we wake up, we go into our garage at some point in time, we get in our car, we drive to our office, we get the underground parkade or maybe the above ground parkade uh -huh. and you walk into a building and maybe at lunch you walk outside for a few minutes to grab your lunch or go to a lunch meeting or go smells and you come back in and then you get back in your car and you drive and that's a cycle make you pretty soft <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then there's we on average we touch our phones mm -hmm. over 2600 times a day which i was just shocked when wow. i saw that number and additionally we spend 11 on average 11 hours, six minutes per day using digital media. Uh -huh. So like your cell phone, your TV, computer, audio. And I realize we're guilty of that right now. Uh, and that is a lot of this data too. It comes from a book that you might love. And I remember saying this to Kevin. It's a, it's a book called The Comfort Crisis. Okay. Yeah. By a gentleman named Michael Easter. And part of that, pro go ahead. I was just going to say, I've got, I've got another stat for you that I just learned the other Yeah, go day. for it in a course that I'm taking, the average person scrolls 110 yards per day of social, of, of social media, 110 yards per day. Uh, and that's, that's, yeah, that's which, which that's incredible. Blows so me. that's a lot. These are some of the reasons why you would want to go and do this, right? Yeah. We need to, we want to break this and get away. And there's the distractions and it's interesting when we were talking before, he said, okay, the format's kind of like a Tim Ferriss podcast. And this conversation reminded me of a episode of Andrew Huberman's podcast where he had Tim Ferriss on. Yeah. And the idea of, and you're common about scrolling, and I really appreciate that because I'm going to use that in my sales yeah. and my marketing, is <laughs> Tim and, and Andrew were talking about how if you're trying to bring willpower uh -huh. to social media uh -huh. as your tool to limit it, Huh. their analogy was you're bringing a knife to a gunfight like yeah. you you can't yeah. yeah and so when i look at these and i've seen these wellness retreats and i've seen these things where you look at it and you go okay well we're going to you know encourage you not to use your cell phone or we're going to try to take it away or there's going to be certain times i'm just going to take you somewhere where sure you you keep your cell phone because it's a really nice camera right now it's a really convenient camera mm -hmm. but you can't connect you can try and i think i you can try, but there's no, there's no connection. Yeah. And the idea is they're like, the way I, I pitch this too, is that we, we drive to where the land ends Yep. for all the destinations. We get on a float plane. Yeah. So we drive, we drive until the road ends. Yeah. We fly until the land ends. Yeah. And then for a couple of the trips a year, we, we hike for five days. 
Yeah. Max distance on one of the days is eight miles. Yeah. So you're like, Not bad. But, and that's the first day. So you're, you've got the energy. Yeah. And then the, the days again are also intentionally designed just to slow you down. And it's, it's interesting because the, there have now been studies done and it's called the three day effect. Yeah. And so the three day effect is about three days in nature, consecutive days without a cell phone signal. And the types of things that this results in is a 21% lower stress response, a 29% drop in PTSD symptoms. Uh -huh. It has a 50% improvement in convergent thinking, which is problem solving. Uh -huh. And it just, it helps you reset your thinking, revive your brain, tame as burnout, make you feel better. And all those things that I said about, you know, lowering your stress, your PTSD, yeah. your ability to problem solve, that stuff is like sustained for another three months. Yeah. And so this is the idea. I Go that. ahead. I, I love this, man. So, so I, I've got, I've got, uh, I've got ammunition for you, for your sales and marketing <laughs> on some of this stuff. One of our clients is BioCybernaut Institute. And they do alpha brainwave training. And what you're talking about all this stuff is, is just massive increases in alpha brainwaves. And that all happens out there. I'm looking out here that I've got a forest in my backyard. Um, and, and that's, yeah. And I've got, I've got some, some statistics and, and studies and, and things like that, that I'd, I'd love to share with you that I think will help you yes, out. Thank I you. Mean, may help you out, help you out with, you know, sales and, and, and marketing mm -hmm. and stuff. Cause this is, um, I mean, what you're talking about is, is absolutely true. And the stuff that they do, um, <clears throat> you know, they'll, when they do alpha brainwave training, they study the, they have studied the results t up to 12 months after a training. And there are perceivable and, and measurable increases in things like mood and IQ from this stuff, that's, like it will that's incredible. literally raise your IQ. And so, I mean, what you're talking about is essentially something very, very similar, perhaps on a smaller scale and with way less tech. <laughs> it, yeah, and, it, and it's even interesting too, because I think for people to get some of the, the benefits, this type of stuff yeah. is you actually only need to be walking for, I think it's 20 minutes and six seconds. Uh-huh in nature without touching or looking at your your cell phone huh. to begin to experience some of this yeah. these benefits yeah. and that is like and i don't mean like make sure you're 100 miles from a cell phone signal it can be make sure there's it's a tree-lined street yeah yeah expose yourself to some green <laughs> exactly yeah. I love it, man. The other thing, I mean, this is, this is, this, we're on a, we're live on a podcast right now. This probably isn't the best place to, to talk about this kind of stuff, but I would love to partner with you and do something like that out here. Oh, that'd be very cool to do. Yeah. And that, and that's one of the things I'm trying to figure out. Cause you also asked how to, how do you join? And so it's interesting because I am, I was actually trying to pin down dates for next year yeah. before we, we did this. I'm very, very close. Yeah. Uh, because there's a couple of destinations that I do it. Um, I said on the West coast of Vancouver Island and it's, uh, it's entirely dictated by the tides. Uh -huh. So there's only a couple of times in the year when you can actually go and do a couple of these destinations. Yeah. There's another destination that I'm working with a float plane company to get into. So those ones are basically early June, early July. Uh -huh. uh, next year, there's no opportunity to do that destination in august the tides just purely do not go low enough for it to be safe yeah. uh, and when i'm talking about safe just so everyone's listening i carry both a satellite phone and a satellite messenger yep. on different networks so i've yep. built in redundancy there yeah there's another destination i'm working on with a couple of flow plane companies that i've been into and i've scouted these destinations is it's a lake that sits at four thousand feet above sea level and the granite walls around it are one and a half times the height of El Cap in Yosemite. Nice. And it is just cool. <laughs> unbelievable when you when you fly in there. And so these, like, I should know in the next 30 days exactly when these trips will be yeah. next year. Very cool. But it's generally early June, early July. And then the other trip is into the mountain lake is late August or early September just from a weather perspective, because that one at 4,000 feet above sea level, 
the ice doesn't come off the lake until mid July. Uh huh. Do you do you do any winter stuff at all? I haven't yet. Okay. Um, like, and what I camping that kind of thing. Oh, <laughs> uh, I've done it personally. So sure, yes, sure, sure. personally, there's a different level of a little hardcore. There's, there's a little barrier, right? And there's like I think with some of those things, that's where I would look at doing something um, into a backcountry hut. Yeah, or something just to the the safety side of this is so important. Sure, and it and it's so key, and so the mm. the variables of weather and things like that or if you're getting you know you i think some of us have seen some of your listeners have seen like the backcountry ski trips where people are holed up in their tent for 10 days it's like okay let's you know in the winter i would look at you know removing that part of the uh experience because this isn't intended to it's not designed to suffer sure it's it's designed to have that that nature experience. Admittedly, too, I'm also looking at some warm weather destinations yeah. that I could do in sort of like November or February, which yeah. you also live in the Pacific Northwest will appreciate. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> February is cold for a while. <laughs> Yeah. Very cool. All right. Awesome, man. That yeah, that sounds that sounds amazing. Um, it's wow. also neat too on these trips too, where the wildlife that people get to see. And I've got a, a, a trailer for these trips where, you know, yes, like we get, you see black bears, you see tons of eagles, you'll see, you know, salmon jumping and swimming upstream. We're also in an area where uh, there are a lot of wolves uh -huh. uh, and these are sea wolves. And so they, it's interesting because people again ask me like, what do we do if there's a wolf? Uh, well, a couple of things. First, mandatory gear includes yeah. a hiking pool that is for your benefit of hiking and then if you do see a wolf guess where we're going we're going into the ocean yeah yeah because we can stand at two and a half feet deep and feel confident in that and you can and i will say this too i've seen wolves i've never had them come close yeah i right, vancouver island's no joke you got cougar and and black bear there as well i don't know if there, i don't think there's any grizzlies but there's there's certainly black bear yes there's no couple of years ago seven grizzlies swam over on one spot oh well, okay. we're on the opposite side of the island from where yeah. that happened but yeah there are yeah there are cougar mountain lion uh generally they are more on the central and east side of the island and we're way out on the west it's also a time of year where the cougars don't need to come down to the water yeah. to find food yeah yeah so nice yeah but yes, it is. It is no joke. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's also just for those listening, like, yeah, I mean, it sounds like Graham, it sounds like you've done this many times. Um, obviously, you're making safety a priority. You've got redundancies built in for 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 emergency comms and that kind of thing. So uh, yeah, and, and Vancouver Island is drop dead gorgeous. It, and that's the thing that's really interesting. And like, there are there are places on Vancouver Island with white sand beaches. And if you didn't know, if you didn't turn around and look at, you know, the coniferous trees, yeah, you would have you would think that you're in the Caribbean. Uh huh. I did not know that. Cool. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just southwestern BC in general is pretty gorgeous. And BC in general, really, <laughs> following the Cascades. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so outside of the wild walks, like, like with it, what is a, what does a typical engagement look like with you for the coaching client? Great question. So I, several years ago, probably five years ago now, I became a certified high performance coach. Yep. I did my designation with, uh, through Brendan Burchard. Yep. Uh, so that is a science, it's a scientifically backed coaching curriculum. Mm -hmm. Now, I will have clients that I purely take through that curriculum. At the same time, I have clients like the videographer I was talking about, where based on my 20 plus years of experience in business, you know, I help him build his business plan. I help him know, make sure he knows you know, his numbers. I was talking to a young individual the other day who's currently in, you know, He's in Houston, he's in door-to-door -door sales for home security. And 
he has this goal about wanting to do some more public speaking and inspire others to inspire others. Yeah. He doesn't think he has the credibility to do it yet. So mm-hmm. I asked him, like, I'm big on knowing your numbers. I think this is where the sales piece comes into it. Mm-hmm. Where I asked him, how many doors has he knocked on? Mm-hmm. You know, is it over or under 10,000? Mm-hmm. Sort of picked that out. And I'm like, you know, so we talked about that. I'm like, okay, so you've got this go-getter mentality. Mm-hmm. You've got this resilience. You've got this other, you then when somebody actually opens the door, you have to know how to interact with them. Mm-hmm. And so it's, again, it's going through these frameworks and this coaching where you're helping show people what they can actually achieve. I tend to, well, some of my coaching engagements, yes, it's you know, usually like 12 sessions are you know, a package. I tend to engage on a full year right yeah. out of the gate. Yeah. Uh, six six months to a year. It's just how I like to, to do it. And admittedly, part of that is, so I don't have the stress of trying to re-enroll every, somebody every, you know, three or four months or trying to, you know, do that through. And so I think it's, it's all, goal. there are, there are defined outcomes yeah. that we are looking for. Uh, yeah. Certainly too, when I've. Is that, is that so, know, so in defining outcomes, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're working with your client to pick out a goal and, and work towards that. Is that kind of custom tailored, you know, on a client by client basis? It, it, it certainly is, uh, especially when it's in the one-on-one environment. Right. And also to your point, your question, a lot of people will come with a goal, uh-huh. but it's not the real goal. Right. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And so let's, let's figure almost, that almost out. Almost never. They, they let's think, call they that think out. Let's, let's identify that politely. But, yeah. but, and that's the thing too, I find with coaches is our job is to push. Uh huh. <clears throat> and like, that is why we are, it's part of why we are engaged. Yeah. Is, is to elevate the client, to give them more skills, to help them see things that they're otherwise not seeing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. And then, yes, with the, um, with group coaching, which I think is also a coaching model that not enough coaches actually engage with. Uh-huh. Um, because there is, there's community that comes with it. There's people that think about things a little bit differently. You're connecting people. There's the group learning not necessarily group think, but group learning. And there's that interactivity and that social aspect to it that is very beneficial. There's a bit more, there might be a bit more training mm-hmm. or facilitation in a group, uh, depending on how long you've been working with them. But I've got a, a sales team at a, an insurance brokerage that I've been working with for five years now. Yeah. Same group of people. I've also seen group coaching become a really effective part of a sales funnel. Right, where you 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 engage first with a group of people, and then maybe one or two or three people in that group get to know your style. They get to know you, and they you know maybe they get promoted or something, and they want to engage in a in a in a one on one coaching style. So then you can obviously charge more for that because it just funnels people in slowly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think back to the sales process that we're talking about is again with group coaching. There's it's a downsell option potentially for some people because if you're running at say, you know, let's just say you're charging the average in North America, which I think is two fifty an hour. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if you're doing that, let's say you're doing it for twelve weeks, a weekly session, that's three k. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, somebody may not have that. Okay, well, you put them in a coach, a group coaching model, and generally the benchmark there is three to one. Mm-hmm. So you're going to be talking to that person if you're going weekly, maybe you're, you know, three hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. a month for that person if you've got a group of eight to 12. I think as I'm saying this to one of the other models that a lot of people are offering our subscription model mm-hmm. where that is generally one-way communication mm-hmm. at a low at a even lower price point still desirable to have in your product mix yeah uh, certainly yeah but I think with group coaching you want to sort of like max it out at 12. yeah at that point it becomes you can't deliver. I don't believe personally, I'm not capable of delivering the same experience and outcomes in that at once it gets beyond 12. No, I think that, that 12 sounds, that sounds familiar. I'm almost wondering, I don't know if you got that number from somewhere, but it sounds to me like a, the number that they use for um, international baccalaureate 
schools. Oh, interesting. Right, class class size essentially, right? So right. so for there's there's a private school I used to I used to uh, substitute teach um, at a uh, at an IB international school. So I would teach in Japanese, um, and their max class size I think was twelve. Yeah, and it's also interesting because you know, I will have sessions where yes, there's twelve people, but six can show up that week. Uh huh. Yeah. Right. So I think that's also why you know that some people aren't like life happens or they have conflicts or they're traveling on a day. Yeah. And so and keeping they... it there, you'll. <laughs> yeah, and then you record it. And you make sure they have access to it. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Nice man. Um. Graham. You, you've got uh, an offer that you would like to talk about here, Simper Leadership Certified Coaching. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yes, thank you. Uh, it was interesting. So back in the fall of last year, I was at Brendan Burchard's Coaching Summit. And this was just as, as well as ChatGPT. Let's speak, go ahead. Can I jump in? I just want to jump in real quick. Is Brendan Burchard as neurotically happy as as he seems to be <laughs> i like the guy from what i've seen but he seems like obnoxiously happy yes that is a a fact yes yes when so you get in a what what has been neat about brendan over the years because i've been attending his events for probably a decade i've yep. been certified for five years i've done the certification seven times as i've seen him go forward in different groups of people huh. he becomes a bit more casual is just the word that i would use yeah uh which he's still super happy no uh, and he's which is wonderful but yeah. so as brendan was talking about this event and it's when chat gpt was just coming out mm. he's talking about you need a curriculum mm-hmm as a coach that that is that is one of the ways for the next five years you're really going to be able to differentiate yourself because there are these other models or there's apps that are trying to figure out how do we just sort of do this predictive stuff for you know base level what i would call base level coaching or general uh coaching and so i really looked at that and i went okay so i care deeply about leadership mm -hmm. i've got a 20 plus year career in the corporate setting i've about you know, nearly 15 of those have been at the you know, VP level mm -hmm. or above. So, and I've worked in various sizes of organizations and, you know, I'm a big fan of, it's interesting, even like someone like Warren Bennis or Frances Hesselbein who grew girl guides in America. People know who Frances Hesselbein is. She's unreal. But then you're also looking at more people today, like Patrick Lencioni, mm -hmm. who's doing some really great work and Simon Sinek. And I think Adam Grant or something like the two, most well-known or best well-known leadership people or thought leaders today. And I looked at this and I went, you know what? I was like, there is a lead. We need more leaders. You and I were having this conversation earlier. We need better leaders mm -hmm. and leadership also evolves. And it's interesting as I've been doing some of this reading and work recently, the word leadership appeared in print for the first time in 1837. Wow. And so when I look at that, like that is a, in the, context of humans and our how long we've been on the planet mm -hmm. that is a hilariously short period of time mm -hmm. it's it's about there's a gentleman named oliver berkman who wrote a book called four thousand weeks four thousand weeks is if you live to be 80 you live for four thousand weeks okay. so 1837 is two and a half people ago <laughs> that's okay all right. all right so as we look at this it's going like okay so we've had two and a half lifetimes of people to get really good at being leaders. And this is where I say to you too, it's we're looking at, we have these expectations that a manager is going to be an, is going to be this amazing leader. I see this in companies all the time. Like my manager doesn't express, I'm like, okay, so if you got promoted tomorrow, would you suddenly be able to execute in all of the things that you expect your manager to be executing on? Mm -hmm. And I love Simon Sinek's language in that the problem is that, this is a direct quote, the problem is we don't teach people how to lead. Uh -huh. We have to teach leadership so that leaders can create environments in which all of us can work to our natural best. And that produces trusting teams. Uh -huh. 
end quote. And so when I looked at this and I'm fortunate that a coach in my life has a 60 year career, uh, may or may not have worked with an individual named Anthony Robbins for the first seven years of his career. Mm -hmm. And a couple of years ago, I acquired uh, Bill's lifetime of IP. And so I've been working as well on building a coaching certification mm -hmm. uh, that will help us develop leaders. And I've called this Semper Leadership Certified Coaching. The Americans might be a bit more familiar with the word Semper uh, because it's, I think it's the U.S. Navy. Do I have that right? Uh, uh, Marines, uh, Marine Corps. Marines. Thank the, you. Navy, which is thank, part of the Thank Navy. you. I won't get that wrong again. They're, they're part uh, of the Navy. They're, the Marines are but, technically a part of the Navy. There we go. So the semper in Latin means always. And I think that's one of the big things that leadership is a skill that needs, that always needs to be practiced. It needs to, it needs refinement. It needs growth. It needs development. It needs commitment. And I like leadership really is a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And so as I looked at this, I said, okay, so I've modeled semper leadership certified coaching off of a lot of the stuff that I've seen from that Brendan has done. Mm -hmm. So it's curriculum based. There are five different sets of 12 sessions that people would get over time. Uh, the first one is really about, you know, establishing those, you know, foundations, you know, very first session. How are we defining leadership and management? Let's make sure that we've, you know, we've understood that. Each session, the coach would get a, you know, a set of questions. They get, a worksheet that the client can have. They get a observation sheet to work with, like to how is their client showing up their day? There's a self eval form. You know, you get a session note template. You know, you get a script because you and I were talking about sales. Yep. So I also have a 20 plus year career in sales and marketing. So mm -hmm. you can actually get the script for here's how I'm going to do my first call with somebody to bring them in. Here's the script if I'm going to, if I need to sell them on continue. You don't have to follow it. I've, used it, it works. Um, <laughs> trust the process. Yeah. Um, you know, so there's a lot that you you get with that, but it's, it's interesting that I looked at this too, because with Certified High Performance Coaching, which is an amazing program, so if people are looking at that, I highly recommend you check it out. Um, each time you recertify with uh, Brendan's program, mm -hmm. you get another set of 12 sessions. Mm -hmm but you only get one per year. I'm looking at this. I think we're in such a situation with leaders today that I need to get this material into people's hands faster. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at, okay, so the first time you get certified, you're getting certified on the, the core, the foundational 12 sessions. But then the next 12 months, you're going to get another set of 24. Okay. The next year, you get another set of 24. So you're going to end up with 60 total sessions. No. Um because I want to make sure people get this work as quickly yeah. as they can. And I think the, the big thing is I've looked at other coaching certifications and why I felt really compelled to do this was as we've talked, leadership changes. So if there is ever a time when a session or a worksheet is no longer the best one, it could be. Mm -hmm. It's like, a, it's like, software update on your computer or like your iTunes or something like that. Let's, okay, let's replace it. Let's update the worksheet. Let's update five of the 10 questions yeah. and let's make sure. And that's just being delivered. Um, again, it's what I'm looking at doing from a certification. I'm going to run three certification weeks uh -huh. in uh, 2024. I'm still finalizing those dates, uh, pricing will scale, but it's also going to be in Canadian dollars at first. Uh -huh. Uh, so, you know, initially in the spring of next year, it'd be 4K Canadian, which is about 3K US. Um, and then I'll go sort of, you know, 3,700 US, 5,200 US. By the by 2025, it'll be, you know, 7,500 US. Sure. But you're also getting things like, you know, getting monthly community college, you're getting additional resources. And it is... And it's, it's, it's buy it once, buy it once, own it for life. And it's, it sounds like it's, yeah, so buy, buy it once. And then there is a $500 annual fee. Okay. Yeah. Because you're getting these, I'm going to be updating the material. It's incumbent upon me to make sure I'm on top of that. It's, 
you know, and that's the thing is what I also like is you have to recertify every couple of years, same way that Brendan's done. There's lots of things where it's like, oh, I got my, you know, my certification and I haven't done anything with it. They haven't updated the material. Uh But the world has changed substantially in the past 24 months. Yeah. Yeah. That's just an example, but no, it's, um, yeah. So I'll, I'll flip the details over to you as well. Once I've got it finalized the next couple of days. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, and I really appreciate I know you've got a hard stop in a couple of minutes, but I've really enjoyed the conversation. Yeah, man. I really no, appreciate it, the opportunity to be here. All good. Whatever you can get me for details on that, please do. Mm-hmm. And we'll make sure to add that to the show notes page. Obviously when awesome. we thank you pod. Yep. Um, before, yeah, I, I, I gotta, I gotta run in here in a little bit, but, but I want to, do uh one more thing what three books do you recommend all your clients read high performance habits <laughs> <laughs> um so it's interesting because you asked yeah i'll do this quickly i have a big bookshelf behind me but i have one shelf where all of my must reads are um i'm going to do it this way a little bit you and i talked earlier about we have young kids yeah uh, if you're a parent or aspiring leader, uh, Range by David Epstein. That's a great one. It is, it is a phenomenal book. Um, I would look at um, a new way. It's called A New Way to Think by Roger Martin. Uh, he was a consultant with uh, P&G for about 30 years. Uh, which is really excellent. And uh, yeah, it's jumping out at me. Uh, Emotional Agility by Susan David. Nice. Nice. Um, Emotional Agility, we can kind of get the gist based on the title of the book. Tell us a little bit, give us a, a quick short synopsis of range and new way to think. Range is about, we are so specialized. We're trying to tell people to be so specialized. The example, I'm not giving anything away. The book starts off with a comparison of the athletic careers and how they began of Tiger Woods and Roger Federer. Mm -hmm. Both reached the pinnacle of their careers at the same time. Tiger started holding a golf club when he was about two. Mm -hmm. Federer started about 12. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is that we can there is merit and there is value in being a professional generous and learning all of these various things and having a, you know, a great you know, breadth of, of skills that you then decide which ones do I need to develop. Go and have the experience and figure these things out and then figure out how can you, what complements each other? Where do you really want to narrow in on? What do you vibe with? Uh, I think was, was kind yeah. of a big point of it. Right. And they, they talked about, I love this book. So I want to talk a little bit about it too. They talked about like musicians, right. And these, like hmm. these musicians that they say they're, um, you know, these, these genius musicians and, you know, maybe some of them stumbled upon the right instrument at two years old, like Tiger Woods did with the golf club. Yeah. While others, you know, played violin and played guitar and, and, and landed on piano after learning four or five different instruments. And piano yes. is what they landed on because the piano, like this is this is the instrument that I am connecting with. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then A New Way to Think by Roger Martin really speaks to, you know, the world is changing. We need to remind ourselves, okay, so what has changed? How to figure out what has changed? And how do we need to, you know, think about things? There, he's got a great line in it where, People tend to have a plan. A plan is not a strategy Mm -hmm. where when the plan isn't working, we double down on the tactic. Mm -hmm. We haven't actually reevaluated. Is that what we should be doing? Mm -hmm. Let's go and get the information. Uh, I think too, as a coach, (laughs) it's a great book to to validate sort of like why you need to exist and the the help that you can bring. And then emotional agility is, I see it as a bit of a counter to emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence has become this thing where it's control who you are Mm -hmm. and how you're going to speak. And that's going to be the key to succeeding in business. Emotional agility is like, look, you're a human. 
it's going to be impossible for you to constantly suppress or regulate, you know, and you're not going to be as believable. So let's acknowledge that. And now let's figure out, okay, in these scenarios, how do we need to be showing up? How do we move? It's, it doesn't say let your emotions dominate you, but it, how can you be agile with them? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And like of course, it. high performance. I have not read emotional agility or new way to think. So I'm going to be picking those up. That's awesome. Perfect. Um, because the fact that you threw range in there, like range, range, range blew me away. I, I really like that one. It's a great book. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Grand man, uh, brother, thank you so much for making time to, to chat with me. This has been fantastic. Um, you will definitely be invited back for round two at some point. Thank you very much. We've got more to talk about. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we're on the, we're on the hour now and I got to yes. run. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I appreciate awesome it. to connect. Thank you to our viewers and listeners. You guys are amazing. Without you, this podcast means nothing because if a tree falls in the woods and no one's there to hear it, then I don't know. It still fell, but it doesn't mean anything to anybody. So you guys are rad. Please, if, if you you know like, subscribe, if you know someone that, that you think this would resonate with, be sure to share this with them and uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers.